All right, so this is going to be video two for section 3.2. Technically, this is really going to be kind of something that you would be in 3.3 as well. Um, so you can use this for both of them. <clears throat> um, I personally do not like not going through this first before I introduce some of the other stuff. So I'm doing it slightly out of order, but I think this will be very beneficial um, because I like to teach what we're getting ready to do based upon a unit circle method. I think it, it's the easiest way to understand what we're getting ready to do. Um, so again, this will kind of cover stuff that we're going to do in 3.2 and it'll also cover some of the stuff that will be in 3.3 this will not be the entirety of 3.3 there's more stuff that we have to do there but this is going to kind of be an overlap so here's the idea with a circle if you were to place a circle basically on an xy plane Okay, this is going to be hand drawn, so it won't be the best, but it'll be good enough. If you place it on an XY plane, and we say that this circle has a specific radius, and the radius that we're going to say this thing has is 1. So we are going to say that the radius of this circle is 1, which means that that point right there is the point 1, 0. The radius is 1. <clears throat> when the radius of a circle is 1, what we call it is we call it a unit circle. Unit referring to 1. You're going to find out a lot of things in the math and science when they talk about a unit measurement. It's a measurement of in terms of 1, 1 unit. So radius is going to be 1. Okay, that's going to be important. The other important things that we're going to need to know is we're going to need to remember some properties of special right triangles, but we'll go through that as we do this. So, there are a bunch of special angles on the circle that are going to allow us to find your sine, cosine, and tangent values very easily of these things. So, the first one that we'll start with is if we have an angle of 45 degrees, which hopefully we should know is right in the middle. <clears throat> so, we're going to say that our angle here is 45 degrees, which... Um, at this point, we've done some work with, and hopefully we know that that is the same as pi fourths in radians. So 45 degrees is the same thing as pi fourths. First of all, let's talk a little bit about why that is. Why is it pi fourths, and how would I know that quickly? Well, the idea is that you should know that half of the circle is pi. Okay, that should make sense. So if I start on the positive x-axis and go around to the negative x-axis, that would be pi. And then all the way around is 2 pi. So why is it pi force? Well, if I were to basically create another 45 degree angle over here, what you should hopefully see is that on the top of that circle, I have four equal wedges. Okay, those four equal spaces up there are basically saying, well, if I take that entire half circle, which is pi, and divide it into four equal pieces, then each piece would be a rotation of pi over four, pi fourths. So that's how you get pi fourths is equal to 45. Now, most people are just gonna end up memorizing that those values go together, whatever works for you, but that's how it's, that's how it's deciphered. That's how you get it. So um, <clears throat> the biggest takeaway from this for what we're getting ready to do is there's an ordered pair out here at that specific point. Okay, there's a point right there. Our job is going to be to figure out what that point is. Well, the one thing that we know is that an ordered pair is an x and a y value. So if I were to simply start from the origin and dot this over till I get to the x and then go up until I hit the y, that's how you would get it. Well, you should notice that was what we've created is a right triangle there. So there's a right angle right there. <clears throat> so based upon the fact that we know that's a right triangle, I know one of the lengths of the sides at this point. The only one that I know for sure is the hypotenuse. And I know that the hypotenuse is 1 because it is literally the radius of a circle, unit um, radius 1. So I know the length of the hypotenuse is 1. 
So this is what would be considered a 45, 45, because you technically have another 45 here, 90 right triangle. <clears throat> okay, and there are some properties for a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. We could do this one actually by using the Pythagorean theorem and we wouldn't even need to know the property, but I'm going to go through what those properties are. So we have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. 45, 45, 90, oops, I don't want to write 90, I want to use the symbol, 90 right triangle. Whatever this side is, well, the opposite side, because it's going to be, the angles are the same, this is an isosceles triangle, meaning that the two angles are the same, so the opposite sides are the same. Those are both going to be the same length, and the way it works, using Pythagorean theorem, if I were to use the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse would always be 2, I'm sorry, not 2, wow, it would be the side times root 2. So in this case, we're not given the sides, we're given the hypotenuse. So to go backwards from that, what you're going to do is you're going to take that hypotenuse and you're going to divide it by root 2. Since normally I would have taken this side and multiplied it by root 2 to get this, Going backwards, we're going to take the hypotenuse and divide it by root 2 to get that one. Well, then that makes the side over here 1 divided by root 2. But of course, this is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, which makes the other side 1 divided by root 2. And if you were to rationalize those, again, I am perfectly fine with this 1 divided by root 2, but I'm telling you right now that the computer programs are going to ask you to rationalize. Um, if you rationalize that multiplying square root of 2 on the top and the bottom of each one of those fractions, what you end up with is the square root of 2 over 2. And that's the same for both. Okay, so now how is this helpful? Well, Let's say that I wanted to find the sine of 45 degrees, or we'll use radians in this case because this is the way it's going to um, be mostly when you get to calculus. Let's say I wanted to find the sine of pi fourths. Well, sine is the opposite, this one, divided by the hypotenuse, this one. So the sine of pi force is 1 over root 2 divided by 1. Of course, dividing by 1 just makes it stay the same. So it's 1 over root 2 or rationalized root 2 over 2. So that's the sine of pi force. Well, let's say we wanted to find the cosine of pi force. <clears throat> the nice part about that is it's exactly the same because the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's the same thing over 1. So you're still going to get root 2 over 2 rationalized. And then the nice part about this is let's say I wanted to do the tangent of pi fourths. Well, if you either look at the values or you use some of your trig identities, you've got 1 over root 2 divided by 1 over root 2. You're dividing the same thing by itself, which tells you that the tangent is 1. Okay, so that is one part of the special angles that we're going to need to know. That would be as if you had a 45 degree angle stemming from the origin. Okay, I'm not going to put all of this on one circle. I am going to redraw the circles to make this a little bit easier. So let me go ahead and get another circle sketch down here. Go ahead and create the x and y axis. <clears throat> the second of our circles is going to be is if the angle that is made is 30 degrees. And 30 degrees is equivalent to pi over 6. Again, where does that come from? Well, let's say that I split up <clears throat> that top part of the circle by 30 degree increments. Well, that would be 30, that would be another 30, which gives you 60, up to the top, of course, is 90, adding another 30 would be, oops, that's horrible, 120, 
still horrible. The next one would be 150 and then down to 180. You would have six equal slices of that wedge on the top. So you're taking pi, which is half a circle, and dividing it into six parts, which is why 30 degrees is equivalent to pi over 6. So I'm going to go ahead and erase stuff over here because we don't need it. But that's where that comes from as far as the value. I'm going to leave the other one up there for right now because we're going to use that in a second. <clears throat> um, but again, there's an ordered pair out here associated with this. So if I were to drop a Y value, have an X value, I know it's going to have that. <clears throat> the only thing, again, I know for sure the radius right now is 1. I should have written this in there. This is 30 degrees. <clears throat> okay. So this right here is going to stem from a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Because what you have is a 30 degree angle here. We know that that's a right angle, so that's your 90, which means that the leftover angle is 60. <clears throat> and here is the, um, the basic idea for a 30, 60, 90. You have, in this case, not two equivalent um, legs. They're, they're different. So I'm going to deal with what is considered to be the short leg, and it's the short leg because it's opposite of 30 degrees, so it makes it the smaller piece. We're going to call the short leg X. Well, the relationship between the short leg and the hypotenuse is that the hypotenuse is twice the short leg. So that ends up being 2X. And if you use Pythagorean theorem, you could find the missing leg, but in this case, I'm just going to let you know that it would be the short leg times the square root of 3. So that's your relationship. Now, we have to go backwards a little bit because, in this case, we are given the hypotenuse. That's 1. If we want to go back to the short leg, well, since the short leg, you would have to double to get the hypotenuse. We have to divide it, the hypotenuse in half to get the short leg. So dividing 2x in half would give you x. So over here, we're going to have 1 divided in half, which means that that's going to give you 1 half. Okay, and that's your y value. And then according to our little thing down here, <clears throat> you would take that short leg and you would multiply that by the square root of 3 to get the longer leg, which in this case is the x value. So that would be 1 half times the square root of 3, which is the same as the square root of 3 divided by 2. So that is your x value. So again, how would this help us? If we wanted to know the sine of 30 degrees, or again, pi 6, it would be the opposite, which is 1 half, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1. So the sine of pi 6 is 1 half. The cosine of pi 6 would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be root 3 over 2 divided by 1, which is just root 3 over 2. And then the tangent. So in this case, the tangent would be 1 half divided by the square root of 3 over 2. So you would literally write it as 1 half divided by the square root of 3 over 2. But that is a compound fraction. It is definitely not in simplified form. The easiest way to know this is technically what you would do when you divide fractions. You'd bring the bottom one up, flip it over, multiply. What you can realize is the denominator is the same. So ultimately, when you do that process, the denominators are going to cancel out, which leaves you with 1 over root 3. That is not rationalized. To rationalize it, you would multiply the top and the bottom by root 3, and that would give you root 3 over 3. Again, either one of these answers to me is perfectly acceptable. Again, I believe that your um, computer program will have you do root 3 over 3 because I think they want it rationalized. But again, if it doesn't, even better. 1 over root 3 is perfectly acceptable. All right, and then we have one more triangle, which I am going to do on this one because the idea is very similar. <clears throat> and that would be a 60 degree angle. Well, that would be if I went all the way up to here, because that's just adding another 30 degrees onto it. Well, I would drop 
that here. And what you should see is that this angle then would be 30. Well, this is really going to be exactly the opposite of what we just did. Your hypotenuse is still 1. We've got a point up here, an ordered pair. But what you should see is that when you turn this thing to its side, it's the same triangle that we just did. It's just been flipped up on, on its side, which means that this long side, the y value here is actually going to be root 3 over 2. And the short side down here would only be 1 half. So it's exactly the same idea, which means, and I'm going to try and put this right below, <clears throat> it's the same triangle, so it uses the same principles. Let's say I wanted to find the sine of, in this case, by the way, <clears throat> um, 60 degrees is equivalent to pi over 3 because there would be three sets of 60 degrees to give you 180. So it's the same thing as taking pi and dividing it into three equal parts. So if I take the sine of pi over 3, well, that would be the opposite, which is square root of 3 over 2 over the 1. If I were to take the cosine of pi over 3, well, that would be the 1 half divided by 1. And then if we take the tangent of pi over 3, that's going to be the opposite over the adjacent, which is the square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. Give myself a little more room here. Square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. The denominators of the 2, since they're identical, will cancel out. And all you're left with is the square root of 3 over 1, which is the square root of 3. Okay, no need to rationalize anything there because it already is. <clears throat> if nothing else, you should hopefully see that there is a similarity between some of these. If you see the sine of pi 6 is 1 half, and the cosine of pi thirds is 1 half. The cosine of pi 6 is the square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of pi 6, excuse me, the uh, sine of pi thirds is square root of 3 over 2. So two of these things match. The tangents, you're going to have to do a little bit of figuring out. It's not quite as easy. But what I tell people is this. First of all, every single one of these values that we just did with the special right triangles is all in what would be considered the first quadrant. Right? Everything is a positive x or a positive y value. And I completely forgot to write the actual ordered pair here. So that would be the pair 1 half square root of 3 over 2. <clears throat> If you know just one of the values, you can pretty much figure all the rest of them out. What I chose to do personally, and you can pick your own way, was that I chose to memorize in the beginning because I don't want to have to figure all this stuff out from the circle every single time. I chose to memorize the sine of pi 6 being 1 half. I don't know why that's the one I picked. It's just the one I picked. What I know is that when it comes to these ordered pairs, these things right here. One half and the square root of three are always going to go together with these special angles. So if one of them is one half, the other one is the square root of three over two and vice versa. So I know that if I have the sine of pi six is one half, I know that the cosine of pi six has to be square root three over two because they have to go together. And that tells me that if I go to pi thirds, since I know that the sine of pi 6 is 1 half, the sine of pi thirds, since again it's the same triangle that's flipped, had to be the square root of 3 over 2. Which means that the cosine of pi thirds has to be 1 half, because again, those two numbers have to go together in one angle. There are all kinds of different ways you can choose to know this stuff. You have to find the best way that works for you, because otherwise this could be a ton of memorization. Um, ultimately, you're going to want to know these values very, very quickly. That's going to be a very important thing to do. You're going to want to know these things very quickly. Whatever method you come up with, as long as it works for you, um, that's, what you that's what you're going to go with. So where am I going to actually use this stuff when it comes to problems? Like, what are we going to do? So you might be asked to do something like this. Let's do an example. I have no idea what example number we're on, so I'm just going to say example. 
<clears throat> you might want to say, um, let's find the exact value of sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees. <clears throat> And this might be something that you're expected to do without a calculator because a calculator is going to spit out a decimal approximation for this. So we want to know the exact value, which is going to probably include roots in it. Well, that means you have to know these things. So the sine of 45 degrees, again, I'm not going to go through how to do it. You have to come up with your own method, is the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So multiplying those two things together, multiplying your fractions, we'll multiply across the top and across the bottom, and we get um, that is incorrect. I apologize, I've made a mistake. Um, I was going way too fast. The sine of 45 degrees is indeed square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees, excuse me, is the square root of 3 over 2. That totally makes my answer different. Um, so the denominator is still going to be 4, but the numerator in this case is going to be the square root of 6, multiplying those two square roots together. Okay, so that's what that one is. Um, we could do something like tangent of pi over 4 minus sine of pi over 3. So again, you got to change those into their values. The tangent of pi over 4 is probably one of the easier ones. It's 1. But once you get used to the whole circle idea, which again, we'll do more work with later, but once you get used to that, that's, that's an easy one to figure out. And then sine of pi thirds. So pi thirds is the same thing as 60 degrees, and 60 degrees is going to be the opposite of the 30 degrees. All kinds of different ways to think about this. Sine of pi thirds is also going to be a root 3 over 2 for sine. <clears throat> so then technically that's the answer. If you needed to combine the fractions, we would change 1 to be 2 over 2 so that it has a common denominator. And then you would just say that it's 2 minus root 3 all divided by 2. All right, so that's a very basic um, idea of what you could do. There's far more better uses for this. Um, we will come back. I think we're going to keep this one as short as I can here at 22 minutes or so. We'll come back with another video and try to finish this one off talking about reference angles and how to find values of the six trig functions using these special angles that we've just covered.